The problem with the formation of the Israeli state wasn't that there was an Israeli state at all. The problem with the formation of the Israeli state that it was born not out of cooperation, but out of expulsion. That's it. I'm saying it. Get a load of this guy. What is this? Brian Greenberg. All the Jewish friends and family I've spoken to feel scared, isolated, and misunderstood right now. Can't help but think this is how the Holocaust happened by normalizing the hatred of Jews. If you think we're acting paranoid, it's because we have a right to be. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to fucking shit on this guy, man. It's I, I feel bad. I, I do. I feel bad for people that are like uh, engaging in fucking mass hysteria because there is a very real and understandable reason for that epigenetic trauma. OK, but currently that trauma is misplaced. That fear is is unfounded. Not all, not every single person, not every single like American Jewish person that says like I'm I'm so afraid, I'm so afraid for my life right now is is saying that because they're legitimately uh, like cynical people that want to shift the attention away from the ongoing active ethnic cleansing campaign Israel is conducting back to their own personal fifis. Okay, not every single person that says that is doing that. Amy Schumer definitely is doing that because she sucks. There are certainly, I'm sure, people who are uh, legitimately afraid because they've been conditioned into thinking that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. So any kind of criticism of Israel when they're, any kind of criticism of Israel when, when uh, you know, Israel's engaging in, in incredibly criticizable actions, you know, that should be condemned widespread, uh, is immediately conflated with anti-Semitism. It might be a legitimate fear, but it's definitely starting to border on mass psychosis. You know what? For no reason, I will show David Graeber's video about Corbin. I think it was David Graeber who talked about Corbin and how uh, the, the anti-Semitism hysteria of uh, Jeremy Corbin was becoming a legitimate issue, was becoming a fucking legitimate issue one of the things I find most offensive is that I am a self-hating Jew if I am loyal to that tradition of Judaism which has produced such figures as Karl Marx, Baruch Spinoza, Jesus, all those Jewish heretics. Somehow all those guys are freaks and Bibi Netanyahu represents my true soul. And if I don't like Bibi Netanyahu very much, I'm a self-hating Jew. I can't express how offensive I find that. Those people don't speak for me and they don't speak for majority of Jews worldwide. And the fact that they are taking our safety, our culture, our traditions, and using it as a weapon to fight against someone who wants to redistribute a little money so there aren't homeless people on the street, it's a deep, profound insult to the humanistic spirit which is at the core of Judaism. It is itself anti-Semitic. I come from a left-wing Zionist tradition, actually. My mom was Hashem al who were socialist Zionists. One of the things which is terrifying is how the right wing has essentially captured the Jewish identity more and more. You hear people saying, well, you know, when people make anti-capitalist statements, they're being subtly anti-Semitic because, <laughs> as we all know, Jewish people tend to... Dude, that's my favorite. That's my favorite type of fucking idiotic sentiment, dude. That's my favorite. It's like, oh... It seems like when you say anti-capitalist stuff, you mean uh, you just want to say that because you want to substitute it for uh, the word Jew. It's like, no, dog, no. As a matter of fact, fuck no. I've, I've definitely heard that. You haven't duked it out with neolibs for as long as I have, I think, that you've never heard that. What the fuck are you saying? Are you telling me that every capitalist is Jewish? What the fuck? Are you a Nazi? Are you literally a fucking Nazi? Am I talking to a Nazi right now? Because that's what Nazis said. Literally, people who are like, oh, it seems like you're just substituting capitals with you. It's like, hello? I am I? No. What I'm talking about is a relation to the means of production. What you're literally subtly saying is that everyone in power is Jewish. <laughs> that, you're the Nazi here. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? And more, more likely to be capitalists. It's like um, Karl Marx, <laughs> the opposite of that. Rosa Luxemburg, Leon Trotsky, Emma Goldman. There is a long tradition of Jewish radicalism. To some degree, what we now think of as the left. Neolibs have recently discovered that settlers exist and are now saying the settler is a euphemism for Jewish. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. That, like, a lot of the people that just, like, 
uh, live on the fuck Hassan camp, but don't actually fully understand the situation that has been ongoing for 75 fucking years. Didn't realize that like when I was having a conversation with Ethan, where I was talking about the differences between like settlers, which is, which Ethan completely understands, obviously he fucking lived in Israel, right? Uh, but they didn't get it. So they were saying like, oh dude, Hassan thinks that like babies living in Israel are fucking settlers. He's calling them settlers and he thinks they should be murdered. And it's like, no, you fucking idiot. You just don't understand anything about this because you didn't even like do any reading to get the talking points that are readily available. If you go to like a Prager U video, okay? You can learn like everything you need to fucking repeat in perpetuity uh, if you want to at least like come across as you're informed in this matter. But because you're not fucking informed in this matter at all, you come across like an idiot. Where they were like, uh -huh, Hassan thinks everyone's a settler and deserved to fucking die, dude. Like, no, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm not like, I'm not saying that at fucking all. Settlers in the West Bank is a perfectly different designation than people living in Israel proper. Anyway. Left is a product of Jewish thought and the Jewish tradition just as much as, say, Christianity comes out of that tradition. When Brown. <laughs> what do I say to someone when they say Jews control the media or have a lot of power and they show me a list of Jewish people? Ask them why they think Jews control the media. Ask them why they think that uh, Jews are a monolith. Like, do you think Jewish people have the same one-track mind? Like, that's they're all operating in a secret cabal? Is that what you think? Because if that's what you think, you're a fucking racist Nazi piece of shit. Okay? First, ask them, why is there a list of Jews? Why do you have a list of Jews? Also, one funny thing that I will say, um, this is actually, <laughs> it would be scary, but... Uh, you know, for the most part, it's like a feckless, cowardly, idiotic Nazis. Uh, I remember looking at the list that Kanye posted. If you remember, Kanye would run around with like a, with like a little placard of like, uh, with a little placard that showed like all the Jews in media. Like, and I remember looking through that list and realizing, oh shit, half of these motherfuckers aren't even Jewish. Like they are suspected of being jewish <laughs> it's like dude these guys these guys literally will be like uh you know they'll they'll look at someone whose name is like uh jonathan brown and they'll be like dude he, secretly he's hiding that he's jewish suspected of being jewish or they'll they'll put like they'll put like uh People who are married to, like, a Jewish person. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, do people have a name for, like, a Jewish cabal controlling the world believers before Nazis? Let's say in, let's say in 1832. I mean, back then, it wasn't, like, as organized. I think it was more like the fucking village would be like, oh, my God, Jews are responsible for the fucking famine that we're enduring right now because they like eating babies and drinking baby blood. And then they would kill all the Jewish people or people that they suspected of being Jews in their fucking, uh, in their, in their villages. And then they would like forcibly push them out. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, like uh, the, the Salem witch trials, but instead of like every woman is a witch, everyone I suspect of being a Jew is a witch. Kind of like that. They were just called anti-Semites. Sartre talked about it a lot. Yeah, this is like a, this is a super, um, super common experience. Yeah, the protocols of Elder uh, Zion. <sighs> Following the French Revolution, the Russian Tsar released the propaganda of the protocols of Elder Zion. So the cabal shit is that old. Following the French Revolution. Yeah. I mean, no, there were historical state organized anti-Semitism and uh, programs. France is a very famous case of this. No, I'm just talking about like the OG. The, the OG like uh, Jews are responsible for everything shit even predates the protocols of El, uh, the protocols of Zion. It, it, it predates that by a lot. Like literally when, when motherfuckers were living in villages, okay. And they would be like, why no potatoes this winter? They would go, oh, it must be the Jews eating baby blood. You know what I mean? And, and they found like different uh, versions of it because it went back to the fucking Romans. Exactly. You know, not to pull a Ben Shapiro here, but there is always a, a, a way to, to just find a, a, a method to, to find and, and blame the Jews. Ironically, of course, and this is something that David Graeber uh, is going to explain to you, even though we paused here, 
like the one fucking attitude that is inherently against anti-Semitism because it explains uh, the the uh, explains history through uh, a a uh, perspective of commodity production and and the relations of how uh, you know the two different classes under dialectical materialism uh, go against one another in their in and uh, design society around those boundaries the the materialist perspective completely erodes anti-semitism which is why the og uh both karl marx even though people try to say karl marx is anti-semitic but especially lenin were incredibly against anti-semitism like the reason why anti-semitism festers is because you always need like a spiritual association between good and bad you don't understand the world through the master slave dynamic you look at it and you don't understand it through a materialist lens right you, you look at it from like, oh, there's a secret group of guys that are just like behaving in a way. You're, there's a secret group of guys that are, that are you know, out there uh, that are just uh, bad guys. Okay? They're bad guys. They're the bad guys. Who are the bad guys? Jews. Why do you think that? Well, I didn't really think about it too much, but the guys before me said it was Jews. So I'm going to go along with it. So the irony, of course, is, again, <laughs> materialist understandings of the world immediately erode any kind of ideological uh, predisposition you might have, and it inherently destroys conspiracy theories, specifically ones that, that revolve around Jews, which all conspiracy theories ultimately revolve around Jews in general. Okay? So that is the hilarious part about it, which is that most of the... Bro, if you get clipped out of context, OML on my life, why would I get clipped out of context here? Anti-Semitism has historically been used as a way to relieve social pressure when material conditions worsen. It's as simple as a usual small group of the population as a scapegoat failure policy of the economic system. Yeah, that's another good way to look at it. It's a an, it's an very effective outgroup. But, but inherently, the effective outgroup is only effective if you only think about it as like... Um, if, you, if you can't comprehend the world through a materialist lens, you, you have to find another reason why bad things are happening... And bad things are happening because there are bad guys. Who are the bad guys? Oh, maybe these guys are the bad guys. And it always turns into Jews and, and allies of those who uh, were suspected of being Jewish even. So that's it. Um, w wait, before you... Wait, I can't believe you added the guy who was saying Stalin was uh, openly anti-Semitic. He's going to hit me with the fucking... Um, he's going he's gonna to talk about the doctor's plot, which is true. Right. Like, I mean, there was definitely Stalin wasn't great. Stalin was not carrying on, I think, Lenin's uh, uh, tradition uh, adequately. It's only one of the uh, many different things that was wrong. Um, but yeah. The, you know, who Stalin was a fucking Zionist, actually. So just something to think about, too. Maybe carrying on. Maybe, maybe carrying on the, the history and the tradition of, of being a Zionist while also simultaneously having anti-Semitic opinions. What if you place Jew with Zionist in that whole Jews run the world sentiment? No, Zionists don't run the fucking world, bitch. Shut the fuck up. No, it's not appropriate to say Zionists run the world either. Unless you're talking about like all the Christians who are uh, uh, Zionists as well. In many cases, that's not a replication. That's not a replacement of the word Jew and Zionist. Okay? It's so fucking stupid. Yeah, that just sounds like you're anti-Semitic, but trying to hide it. Exactly. No. Capitalists run the world. Some of those capital owners are Zionists. That does not mean that they're Jewish, though. Absolutely fucking lutely not. Okay? As a matter of fact, pound for pound, there's a reason why this fucking dipshit went to talk, this dipshit who, like, yesterday was screaming from the fucking rooftops about how the UN Secretary General has to be fired because he forgot to run the top of the hour ad break at the top of every hour uh, and and uh, tell you that if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with Twitch Prime. But here's the three-minute ad break now. This fucking dipshit, there's a reason why he went and talked to the guy who said God sent Hitler to send the Jews to the Holy Land because a lot of anti-Semites who are Christian, are the best ultra-Zionists, okay? That's it. These guys have, like, a psychotic religious fervor as to why Israel must be Jewish, 
And then if you look at the uh, people in positions of power in the American government, the reason why they want Israel to exist in the way that it does is because it's a good forward operating base. It's a military base. It's a military base that also has like espionage capabilities, very powerful destabilizing force in the region. I would go so far as to say that Iran's interest in Hamas is almost identical to America's interest in Israel in some ways. Not making a moral equivalence here, but as far as like uh, a, a larger power in comparison and their interest, like I, I don't believe that Iranians truly care about the emancipation of a bunch of fucking Sunni Muslims in, 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 in uh, uh, Gaza. They just literally think it's a good destabilizing force against uh, the people that they do want out of the region. You know what I mean? Anyway. The history of why Jews have been disproportionately successful in the capital's age is actually fascinating, and that is, like, impossible to talk about without sounding anti-Semitic, not being able to own land and feudalism leading to living in urban areas, high literacy rates due to liturgical religion, usury laws prohibiting money lending between Christians, pushing them towards mercantilism. Okay, everything that you just mentioned is not... That doesn't... That's not anti-Semitic at all. Like, you are you are responding, you are literally giving a a materialist uh, example as to why that also led to people believing that they had like outsized power and were controlling the fucking government, and then we're controlling the money supply, and that's why we got to fucking purge them and and kill them. Like that's like it becomes anti-Semitic when you consider that to be personally a bad thing that you think that like all Jews across the board are like that when they're not okay clearly and secondly this conversation has moved completely away from uh israel now and we're just fucking talking about uh, uh the the historical reasons as to historical materials reasons as to why like um why the the changing dynamics of the, the global finance economy benefited uh, throughout the development, uh, throughout the development of industrial society, benefited uh, certain groups. Listen, brother, you think Jewish people didn't want to fucking toil the land? Of course they did. You know what I mean? They couldn't own land. I don't understand why this is. Why is this person one of the greatest allies to Zionism? Where is there any backing for that? Purely questioning. Beautiful question, my friend. Look up. The uh, pound for pound donations coming to Israel and Israeli charities from the United States of America. And you will realize that American Jews are not number one at sending money to Israel. As a matter of fact, it's American evangelical Christians that are number one. They send more money to Israel than American Jews do. Do you want to know why? Because they believe in what I just mentioned that this Haaretz article also mentions. Yep. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Like... I mean, instead of questioning me, why don't you question the fact that the fucking UN ambassador to Israel is just like randomly sitting in Texas right now when his country is engaging in ethnic cleansing against Palestinians? Why the fuck is he at a church in Texas, a mega church in Texas? How does that not even spark any interest in your brain for a second where you go, why the fuck is he in Texas? I mean, think about that. Zionism turns into anti-Semitism so quick. Most non-Jewish Zionists are anti-Semitic. Yeah, I mean, they also get real fucking horny and think that, like, think that they could just, like, yeah, this is the other this is the other thing he said. Nationally prominent mega pastor Hagee claims Hitler was a half-breed Jew. In a sermon that Hagee once said, the phrase in scripture used solely to identify the Jewish people. It suggests that this man, the Antichrist, is at least going to be partially Jewish, as was Adolf Hitler, as was Karl Marx. I love that he said Adolf Hitler was the Antichrist, which, fine, fair, but also Karl Marx was the Antichrist. The difference, of course, is that Karl Marx actually was Jewish. So he's, again, I mean, he's just fucking insane. All right, when the church just... hit the street, when the Nazis show up and start taking people away, the guys who are out there defending the Jewish neighborhood will tend to be the radical left. Basically, will tend to be exactly the people that were being yes. targeted. So it's crazy to yes. go after them and to ignore the right. You know, they went through anything that- Yes! This is what was so frustrating to me. Tories have never been fans of Jewish people. Just because they say they love Israel does not mean that they care about Jewish people. It's fucking insane. They literally posted a goddamn, they put up a goddamn statue of Nancy Astor who literally said Hitler has some good ideas while people were fucking shitting on Corbyn and claiming that Corbyn was anti-Semitic. Fuck. Corbyn had ever said 
and try to figure, is there anything we can construct as if it were somehow anti-Semitic? Obviously, if you did that, you could prove anybody was anti-Semitic. You could prove that Margaret Thatcher or Ronald Reagan were communists. If you just like took quotes in isolation and said, oh, he laid a wreath. I mean, Ronald Reagan did lay a wreath on the cemetery of SS troops at Bitburg, the very same force that was running Auschwitz. He knew he was doing it, and no one's ever accused him of being an anti-Semite as a result. Around the same time as everybody was going on and on and on about how Corbyn is supposedly an anti-Semite because he wasn't rigorous enough in disciplining trolls on Twitter, you have Boris Johnson and Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon is doing a tour of the radical right. He's going to give a speech in Commons today that's going to throw down. He just went back to the Daily Telegraph as a columnist. I've been talking to him all weekend about this speech. And the very next day, or maybe it was two days, Johnson comes out with that famous letterbox thing about women in burqas. It was obvious that Bannon gave him the idea. So here he is intentionally sort of inflaming his homophobic, doing this kind of little dog whistle game on the advice of an overt racist. Everybody's like, la di da di da da nothing to see here. I mean, Boris Johnson wrote a book which is so obviously anti-Semitic. The only thing you can think is that people are just pretending not to see it. He actually describes Jewish oligarchs controlling the media and fiddling with the news to change it to their advantage. I mean, it's a classic anti-Semitic Jewish conspiracy theory overtly expressed, you know, in his own name, in something he wrote. Now, find me anybody in the Labor Party who's done something like that. Yet, if you look at the number of mentions of Tory or conservative anti-Semitism versus labor anti-Semitism in the media, at its height in 2018, there were over 6,000 articles mentioning labor anti-Semitism, and the number of articles mentioning Tory or conservative anti-Semitism was zero. It is probably significant that not only... The weaponization of labor anti-Semitism by David Graeber, this is very important because lobbyists and Christian and uh, some Jewish Zionists have wanted to bring this rabid weaponization of anti-Semitism that existed in the UK and still exists in the UK to America. The Democratic majority for uh, Israel was a group that the very same people that did this against Corbyn uh, launched in the United States of America. Their entire goal was to eliminate anyone and everyone that was more progressive than fucking Nancy Pelosi. Okay? Is David Graeber a crusty anarchist? Listen, brother, I'm going to explain something to you. As much as I make fun of anarchists, I still read them, and you should too. Anyway, um... And also, David Graeber was a wonderful person who unfortunately passed away. Um, also, um, where was I? Fuck, I got sidetracked. Okay, so, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. What the fuck was I talking about? I forgot. Oh, Democratic Majority for Israel. So, Democratic Majority for Israel was created by the same fucking dudes that did this against uh, Corbyn. And their sole goal, okay, their sing singular goal wasn't to, like, combat anti-Semitism, was to weaponize anti-Semitism against those who were more progressive than Nancy Pelosi. They would try to prop up primary opponents to the squad. They tried to attack Bernie Sanders and said Bernie Sanders was an anti-Semite. At the time... I cover this extensively, and I told you guys how laughable it is because Americans don't think that way. They're not as, like, advanced in the, in the Zionist fucking brainworms as to think that, like, a Jewish guy could possibly be anti-Semitic, which, ironically, yes, you can be Jewish and anti-Semitic, of course, right? Except from the perspective of Americans, they'd be like, what? He's Jewish. That's ridiculous. Shut the fuck up. And now it seems like uh we are getting to that uh era or people are pushing for that here in the united states of america as well like the british uh the the british style uh of of uh weaponization of anti-semitism 
against those deemed too progressive for American politics is happening here too. Only did the conservatives oppose the condemnation of Viktor Orban, who's a classic right-wing anti-Semite. Johnson put in his platform specifically to criminalize travelers. And I don't think there's any precedent for a political platform in the UK of a political party to specifically mention an ethnic group and say, we intend to persecute them. And it's a very group that second to the Jews was the most persecuted by the Nazis. Anti-Semitism has to be fought like any other form of racism. You can't single it out and say the rules are different from some people than for others. All of these forms of structural bias, of prejudice, I don't like to use the word hatred. <laughs> when you speak of Bernie being Jewish, you mean not religiously, right? Brother, are you fucking kidding me? Have you met a Jewish person? The number of Jewish people that aren't reformist Jews is, you know, much smaller than the number of people who are not exactly religious. The fuck? In Israel, I think the number is like 80, what is it, 75% or something? Like, yeah, most Jews are, are secular. Because I think the word hatred is overused. A lot of the people who are the most... You know what the funniest thing is? Not all Jews are Ben Shapiro, but, but, but Ben Shapiro is not even like... Dude, dude, Ben Shapiro is anti-abortion, okay? Jews, religious Jews, are not anti-abortion. Secular Jews are not anti-abortion, but neither are fucking religious Jews. It's in the Torah. Ben Shapiro is a religious Christian. He behaves like a religious Christian. So it's not even like, like his perspective. I mean, he's also very anti-Semitic. He just always says like bad Jew, bad Jew, bad Jew all the time to people. So it's, it's so funny that like he literally advocates for a cause that while, while simultaneously LARPing is like this super religious Orthodox Jew, but like his perspective is like major cause against abortion is, is literally totally permissible, allowed by his religion. It doesn't make sense. Until you realize he's just the, he's just the, you know, weapon for the Christians. Dangerous are not the ones who are inspired by strong emotions like hatred. They are cynical, calculating people who are trying to turn people against each other, create a kind of political poison to take people whose interests are in common, whose experiences are much more similar to each other than they are to the people in control of our society, and to make them hate each other. Those are the people we really have to worry about. Anti-Semitism is a problem. It exists in our society, and we shouldn't pretend that it doesn't. I think people who say, what are you talking about? There are no anti-Semites in the Labour Party. Now, that's absurd. Of course there are. On the other hand, the question is, is it worse in the Labour Party than it is anywhere else? And at least until this uh, scandal broke, it was very clear that like Labour Party voters were less likely to be anti-Semitic. On the other hand, if you're trying <laughs> yeah. to create anti It's so funny because it's like, wow, dude, the Labour Party is so anti-Semitic. I'm like, hello, have you seen a Tory? Like, what the fuck are you saying? Like, this is what is always so frustrating to me. Like, motherfuckers who write for, like, you know, the, the Federalist uh, uh, paper, you know what I mean? Like... People that write for people that write for papers that are so deeply and rabidly anti-Semitic that turn around and go, man, the DSA is out of control. They fucking love Hamas. They're such anti-Semitic pieces of shit. It's like, I hate that fucking liberals give that an ounce of credibility. I despise those liberals, okay? I despise those liberals who are like, man, the left sure is anti-Semitic. It's like, Brother, anti-Semitism exists in every facet of society. It's the it's the most OG fucking type of most damaging conspiracy out there. It's at the heart of every fascist theory. It's at the heart of every conspiracy theory. Okay? But if you think for a fucking brief moment, if you think, stick to your lane, dog, what do you mean? If you think for even a fucking brief-ass moment that that uh, uh, the, the left has a much larger problem with anti-Semitism than the right, you are fucking delusional. You just hate socialism, and now you're using anti-Semitism as another mechanism to attack uh, leftists. That's it. Crazy. Anti-Semitism wasn't at the core of Japanese fascism, though. Okay, bro. I mean, calm down, okay? Calm down. Uh, yes, fair. Even uh, from what I understand, they tried to instill anti-Semitic theories in the minds of the Japanese fascists, but they were too far removed from uh, from even understanding what a Jewish person is to be able to develop uh, such ideas. Yeah, it's the it's the classic Felix bit that the Japanese were like, oh my god, like they were sent a copy of the Protocols of Zion, 
And they were like, oh my God, these guys are so powerful. What the fuck? And they believed it and were like, we should align with them. <laughs> Misunderstanding uh, anti-Semitic propaganda and thinking they're like super powerful, cool guys is is really funny. Anyway, let's anti-Semitism. If you're trying to create a feeling that there is a Jewish conspiracy intervening in politics, I can't think of a better way of doing it than what actually happened, which is a group of people, most of whom were not Jewish, going to the media and screaming their heads off and trying to create hysteria, trying to terrify the Jewish population, trying to create an atmosphere of fear of potential purges within a political party, because then people are going to say, well, maybe there is some kind of conspiracy going on. You know, yeah, the, the thing that is happening, it's happening in France too. And it's so fucking stupid that people are believing in it. And God damn it, liberals are always, as always, giving it up, okay? Same in France right now. Le Pen's party was literally created by the ex-SS members, but now everyone left of Mélenchon is saying that the radical left is more anti-Semitic because they are not pro-genocide in Gaza. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This kind of shit, brother, this literally fucking happened, okay? This already happened. This already happened. Back then, Jews across the board were, of course, way more revolutionary and were uh, also mostly uh, communist socialists too so they were either first slaughtered for being communist or socialist and then uh, and then also of course slaughtered for being jewish um but you know communism was seen as the jewish uh ideology okay but liberals all the same ended up aligning with fucking fascists back then they did that they already did that and now it's happening again liberals are liberals are are being cut and, and fascism is bleeding out of their bodies the way that they fucking immediately jump and go, yeah, actually, the left is so deeply anti-Semitic. That's why we got to fucking align ourselves with, like, the likes of Marie Le Pen. Okay, cool. It wasn't, as it turned out, largely a Jewish conspiracy. Most of the people doing it weren't Jewish. And most of the people who were Jewish were hardly representative of the Jewish community at large. But it's important to remember that the people who were the most loud in accusing Corbyn of anti-Semitism had been protesting everything else they could possibly think of about Corbyn, ranging from his unelectability to his taste in clothes. You know, they've been trying to make a scandal out of something for years on end. The bike. Uh, the bike that he uh, and, rode was and the Mao. hadn't shown the slightest concern, many of them, for Jewish issues until they figured out, oh, this is something we can make it stick. And one reason, of course, that it seems to stick is because he'd been a long-term campaigner for Palestinian rights. In America, there was an attempt even before the fervor about Corbyn during the governor's race in New York to accuse the other side of anti-Semitism. And the New York Times stepped in. In this case, they said, no, don't go there. This is a really bad precedent. We do not want to weaponize anti-Semitism by using it for cheap political shots. But then after what happened in the UK, there's been a second round and people are saying, well, maybe if it worked so well against- Dude, the Washington Examiner, bro, the Washington Examiner is like fucking posting greedy merchant memes, but in a in a more serialized and more serious manner on days where they're not writing this article about how Bernie Sanders is an anti-Semitism problem, okay? Like, this is what blows my fucking mind about the process here. Fuck! These are the guys who are like George Soros, the Jewish puppet master, <laughs> bastardizing uh, American society by uh, allowing... Uh, dirty brown people to come in through the southern border am i right and then they go you know who's really anti-semitic fucking bernie sanders makes me so mad and then dumb bitches don't even fucking go where am i getting this information from well i'm a dumb bitch so i <laughs> they have a george soros tag <laughs> washington examiner has a george soros tag <laughs> bro <laughs> George Soros group quietly funded trip by Democrats to meet left-wing foreign leaders. Legalized shoplifting becomes a racket and minorities hard as hit. George Soros foundations cut in Europe anger beneficiaries. Why? I no longer feel safe walking around Philadelphia. Why? Because a Jewish billionaire made it so that crime is legal. You know, a Jewish billionaire controlling society. A Jew controlling society and destroying the beautiful the beautiful Western civilization, right? You know who said that? Nazis did. And there's nothing different here. It's just that they decided, instead of saying America is a Christian nation, America is a Judeo-Christian nation that is aligned with Israel because, it, you know, Israel is uh, 
our our most important asset, okay? I mean, listen, I've told you this before, like, this motherfucker was a broke boy, okay? And is a broke boy in comparison to, like, fucking the likes of Sheldon Adelson, you know what I mean? Ridiculous. Not that it fucking matters, okay? Like, in comparison to fucking, uh, hello, the Koch brothers? Fuck, yeah, I know, Sheldon's dead. Rest in piss, he was a freak, but... You know, you know who's the real, uh, you know, you know who's the real power player? I don't know. Maybe the Koch brothers, uh, don't you think? Also, one of them is dead. Ridiculous. Also, he's a literal Holocaust survivor. I know. That's the fucking craziest part. Like, I'm not a fan of George Soros by any means because he is an annoying fucking lib. And everything he has done is at the behest of the American. Um, the only real violence George Soros has funded was anti-communist rebels in Tibet. Yeah, he is... Uh, it's not the only violence he's funded. He is a lib. He's a lib. He is a billionaire lib, okay? He is the most annoying fucking neoliberal out there with the Ford Foundation or Open Society Foundation. He's just, he is the biggest fucking lib, and it's very annoying, and I mean that in, like, uh, in a negative way, okay? But the idea that, like, he is a major power player that's, like, disrupting the fucking world in a Jewish way is pretty funny because, you know... There are plenty of other American Christian billionaires that are uh, infinitely more uh, damaging to American domestic politics, especially. Look at what he did in Ukraine in 2014. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not, not going to get into any of that. We're, we're addressing, like, why the real anti-Semites are on the right always. Corbyn, we can try it against Sanders. Of course, Sanders is Jewish, so it's going to be a little more difficult, right? But they gave it a shot, and they're definitely using it against some of his allies. I think that it's important to distinguish between three things that people often confuse. One is anti-Semitism, another is anti-Zionism, and the third thing is opposition to the Israeli government. You can say that the current right-wing government of Israel is horrific and still not be opposed to the existence of Israel, let alone not hate Jews. And what people are trying to do now is not just conflate anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, they're trying to inflate anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism, and opposition to a particular political party and its agenda, which is just crazy. The project of Zionism meant something very different from someone who was a follower of Jabhat. I mean, I've literally made that joke. I talk about Bill Gates might as well be Jewish the way these motherfuckers talk about him. I've said that before as a joke. Like, <laughs> they literally do the same thing to Bill Gates, but it doesn't stick as hard because he's, like, not... Bill Gates is the, the most, like, genteel man that gets, like, uh, anti-Semitic conspiracies uh, launched against him. I mean, he sucks, too, but because he's a fucking billionaire who has, like, eviscerated public schooling in this country... And also has like very weird, almost eugenics backed, um, very, very weird eugenics, uh, almost eugenics uh, ideas in, in Africa. And also he denied the, the vaccine IP to the fucking world. That was really gross. And said that India doesn't have the productive powers to be able to, uh, the productive powers, the productive capabilities to be able to like make their own vaccine. Tinsky, who might as well have been a fascist but happened to be Jewish, and someone who was, say, Hashim Hatzair, who was a socialist Marxist who wanted to go to Israel to create a communal society in cooperation with the Arabs who live there. I'm actually myself a little uncomfortable when people use, you know, I am not anti-Semitic, I'm anti-Zionist, but all Zionists are evil. No, they weren't all evil. I mean, the project has ended up in an absolutely horrific right-wing government. That doesn't mean it had to turn out that way. I'm an anarchist. I'm opposed to states as... I agree with what uh, David Graeber is saying. There are, no, Zionism is a colonial ideology. Brother, you're talking about a colonial ideology. Saying Zionism is a colonial ideology, which I agree with, like, as far as Theodore Herzl and the way he perceived it and the way he mentioned it, uh, completely removes very one very important part of this equation. The justification for why Jews were fucking terrified and wanted to have a goddamn nation state for themselves. Okay? I need you to understand something here. You are, are engaging in unnuanced thinking. The problem with the formation of the Israeli state wasn't that there was an Israeli state at all. The problem with the formation of the Israeli state that it was born not out of cooperation, but out of expulsion. That's it. Mostly because of the British. Uh, <laughs> you know, 
if we're keeping it a buck 50 agree to disagree no 100 percent, dude and and the obviously it was a militant movement zionism very quickly became a militant movement okay it was born out of military conquest against a civilian population so what happened the the Irgun brigades uh, lihi the the uh what's the word haganah like these were all these were all basically standing armies that butchered and and slaughtered and 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 terrorized uh, the the arab uh, palestinian christian and muslim population in that area but it but it doesn't fucking matter like it's not supposed to be that way it should have not ever been that way and there were plenty of people do we have zionism without hurting anyone real question yes if the part if it wasn't done by partition but by equal distribution of land in a cooperative way especially because there were already jews there they were like around three percent and by what 1940s by the 1940s they were at around 30 percent there was always a point where um there was always a point that could have where where cooperation could have occurred it's just that it could have never happened under the guise of of british colonial powers because the british colonial powers did not care or understand the situation on the ground at all michael brooks 100 percent disagrees with that take what take all actual Zionist states end up in apartheid and excluding several groups who are not at the center of the Zionist movement look at any religious Zionist project in the uh in the religion michael brooks 100 percent agrees with that take i mean i respect his position i think that um while zionism is inherently colonialist my my perspective on it is that yes i think that it's understandable that jewish people were fearful and wanted to have a state does that make sense because like a lot of the people coming after world war ii were coming as as people who had just escaped concentration camps where uh, you know what i mean that's like i think that it's important to understand that people that even escape pogroms in arab nations as well during uh, Arab nationalist movements during post-colonial movements that were occurring like these are these are tumultuous times that uh where where many Jewish people deserve to have a state and wanted to be free of oppression this is something that I perfectly understand I I get that it's just the actions themselves were completely unjustifiable and what became of the uh Zionist project was that the most militant facets uh completely overtook the movement Immigration is not the same as colonialism. Yes, because it wasn't immigration. It could have been, but it wasn't. Has anyone ever told you you look a little like the CEO of Instagram? Who? Fucking Mark Zuckerberg? As a solution to anything. But I think that everyone has a right to live where they want to live. If Jewish people identify with this as their homeland, they have a right to live there, but so does anybody else who identifies as a homeland. I mean, Oh, this is, yeah, the American Jewish Labor Congress overwhelmingly voted against his formation in 1999, the 500,000 American Jewish Labor Congress. People did see the writing on the wall, but at the same time, there were plenty who went with good intentions and also fear of the brutal genocide in 1992, oh, 1992, what am I saying, in World War II. Dude, I don't think, I think people that don't understand, I don't think people understand the fucking mentality. Adam Masseri, spitting image, is that the CEO of Instagram? I'll look it up. Um... I don't think people understand what the fuck you think I look like this guy? What are you fucking nuts? The fuck? This guy? You think I look like this guy? Freaking nerd. Anyway, that's why I, I told you guys to watch 1948 Creation and Catastrophe. Because I think while you leave that documentary thinking, oh my god, these guys were so fucking brutal, so close in proximity to the Holocaust, especially. You also kind of understand in my opinion like where the fear uh it came from like this is the 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 holocaust is a, a truly truly unique evil like it, it is it is a really really fucked up thing that happened i don't know how to like any anything that i mention anything that i mention about the holocaust will will not serve the the cruelty that that Jewish people experienced, and not just Jewish people, but certainly a lot of Jewish people experienced. So, is it true about the numbers? What the fuck are you saying? Yes, it, w yes, the numbers are true. What the, what the fuck? One of the, the most well-documented uh, atrocities on the fucking planet. Yes, gross.
The Palestinian, no, I don't understand. I mean, look, I'm not saying it is justifiable in any meaningful capacity what uh, Zionist brigades did, okay, or what the Israeli state has done. Not completely, unimaginably unacceptable. Look at Nanking, look at the Indonesian purges. The Holocaust is brutal, but every reoccurring ethnic and ideological clean, cleansing phenomena. Um, wanting refuge versus colonial support of a project that would always spin fascist 100% of the time under capitalism. No, I think that, I mean, even like compared to the Indonesian purges, yeah, like also uh, vile, atrocious. Nanking, I can't speak on, but I would say that in comparison to the Indonesian purges, yes, like the Holocaust was still... Uh, more brutal but at that point we're just doing um like atrocity competitions and it's weird it's weird to say that like it's weird to make that comparison dude where look at the look at the look at these fucking little nazis dude six million is an exaggeration yeah totally totally man good job no keep it coming easiest bands of all fucking time dude listen if if someone who wants to defend the current Israeli state and its ethnic cleansing campaign and engages in like any kind of revisionist bullshit, okay, I will clap them. But if you think that this is a this is an easy opportunity for you to fucking, you know, try and and shove some classic fucking Nazi rhetoric in here, you know, you will get destroyed. You don't have to have these violent exclusionary solutions. It's, it's especially ironic because when you say the numbers are exaggerated, you're wrong. It's an undercount. If you only think about the 6 million, then you literally forget that the, the atrocities were even greater than that because there was a, it was double the amount, as a matter of fact. Like disabled people, uh, Romani people, travelers, communists, Marxists, suspected Marxists. And that is before you even, and that's just, that's just like the, the concentration camp component. We're not even talking about, we're not even fucking talking about yeah, uh, gay people, trans people, that sort of thing too. But we're, we're forgetting the also the, the human civilian casualty toll as well, or the fucking soldier toll as well uh, in, in that regard. You get the fucking Slavs. Dude, it is, I, I talk about this a lot. It is very difficult, not unique. Look at Nanking, look at the Indonesian purges. Which is why, which is, um, yeah, which is, I'm um, against that calculus. Fuck anti-Semitism. I'm being analytical. Clap all those motherfuckers. Click my log. I did. Um, like, it's not easy to kill millions of people. It's especially not easy to do that while you're also waging war. Like, it is a very difficult process. You have to be just so systematically gross like so systematically subhuman. This is why I try to explain to you when we're talking about what's going on in Gaza. Yeah, the the Einstadtsgruppen death squads just fucking roving around all of Europe, killing everybody. Twelve million number is also a significant underestimation too. But the thing is, like, like it was a machine. It was a machine specifically designed to like murder as many people as possible because that is a very difficult endeavor to engage in. It's unimaginable. Like, the most efficient way to do it is obviously, you know, nuclear holocaust. Uh, what America w was able to do it with one hit, right? Two hits. And even then, think about the toll. Think about the death number there. It's like, what, um, 50,000 immediately? Not a million, 50,000. 220,000 total. <coughs> Okay, but again, um, no, I think the 200,000 is like with the fallout, right? But ban me already, I fucking hate you, piece of shit, Weasley little liar. What? Eight months, eight months subscriber. What is this? Wait, what? Why? You need to debunk that fake GoPro too. Why would they have GoPros? It's clearly a lie. Those babies could have been settlers. You never know. What? Is this guy just coming in here to fucking be like uh, hitting, the, hitting the angle from both sides? Uh, what's happening? It's Friday. He must be drunk, I think. You got 46 timeouts. Holy shit. And banned. Way back in the day. In 2019, he got banned. Why do you hate me? What if he's the guy from the 2019 party? Oh, the, the hate watcher from... Remember one shot, one time a chatter had none and you cooked them? 
I mean, he's been in here since 2018, brother. Like, he fucking has been following me since 24th of December 2018. I wonder why he has this take, but I guess he's not going to respond. All right, let's finish the problems. It is conceivable for people to work out their problems reasonably and get along. In fact, it requires a lot of work to keep people apart, to keep people from comparing notes and noticing that actually they have a lot more in common than they have which divides them. You have forces right now in the Middle East trying as hard as they can to stop people from realizing how much they have in common. In much the same way that racism has been deployed to keep working class people from uniting against their employers. At this time, nationalists' ideologies are almost invariably deployed to keep people forgetting how much they actually have in common with their neighbors. The last election in the UK showed anything. It's that the existing media is not our friend. We need to create media that man rest in power this wasn't even what i was looking for what i was looking for is like the the hysteria that the anti-corbin uh anti-semitism uh weaponization caused amongst jews in in uh, britain i think it was maybe not graber who who made that you're an anti-semi for saying that saying what that at the top of the hour there's a three minute ad break if you no longer want to see those ads all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free with twitch prime